So we're back and I'm really happy to introduce the next speaker. Uh, that is Mariam Tayefi, a colleague of mine. And Tayefi's research interests are prediction models with both classical statistical models and machine learning algorithms. Mariam holds a PhD and works as a senior researcher he here at eHealth Research. Mariam, we look forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Nowadays, we know there are many AI projects in healthcare, but only a few of them have been adopted in healthcare settings. It means there are some obstacles on the way from the research to clinic. The goal of this report that we have prepared recently was to investigate those obstacles and identify the actions to be taken to facilitate the transition of AI from research to clinical practice. We define three objectives for this report, include conducting the systematic review based on the AI implementations around the world, summarizing the barriers and facilitators which influence the implementation process, and according to the results of this review, we conducted some interviews regarding AI implementation projects. At the end, we provided some recommendations for adoption of AI in healthcare. If you are interested to read the full report, please use the link. In total, we conducted 46 interviews with the representatives of private and public organizations, such as vendors for EHR and clinical systems, secondary healthcare providers, management of healthcare organizations, universities, and national authorities from uh, 11 countries. In addition to this scoping review and interviews, also we studied relevant reports about AI implementation in healthcare and national strategies for AI in some EU countries, as well as the UK and the USA, to understand the trends and plans for further development of AI. Also, we have drawn an action plan for the health authorities to facilitate AI implementation in healthcare organizations. The definition of artificial intelligence is between publications. In this report, we associate AI with machine learning, algorithms that employ data-driven methodologies. We use the term artificial intelligence to describe computer programs able to process large volumes of data using computational statistics and machine learning techniques, identify patterns, interpret them, and make prediction for new data entering the system. We distinguish between developing a solution and implementation in clinical situations. Development implies constructing a solution based on the given criteria, uh, which includes creating a model, test, training, and testing it. We defined implementation as the integration of a solution into a healthcare system when it becomes a part of a clinical process. For considering all aspects of AI implementation, we have investigated several topics as a background. We consider the AI as a medical device, regulations regarding development of AI solutions, authorities' responsibilities for these regulations, uh, different ways, uh, ways of obtaining AI solutions, and how we can uh, license these models. Healthcare providers can produce medical equipment for internal use. Software that is intended to be used alone or in combination with other equipments for the purpose of diagnosing, preventing, monitoring, treating, or alleviation of a disease, injury, or disability is considered a medical device software. Uh, there are several regulations and requirements for a medical device to be marketed. One of the requirements to obtain uh, is, uh, is to obtain a C-mark. A C-mark indicates that the product complies with the medical device regulations and meets the specific uh, standards of performance, quality, safety, and efficacy. It doesn't assure whether the data the system has been trained on has been ethically collected. 
it neither guarantees the system will work properly on a given patient population. We describe the process of obtaining a CMARC in details in our report. Also, there are several other regulations for development of AI within research development and the use of clinical decision support tools and quality improvement. Some of them are common for any AI solutions like GDPR, and others can be relevant depending on the, predict the project type, such as uh, in vitro diagnostic regulations. There are three ways to obtain AI solutions in healthcare organizations. Obviously, al each alternative of them uh, has been advantages and disadvantages. A healthcare provider can decide which way to take depending on available resources and competences. However, from the interviews, we see the AI implementations that are successfully deployed into a clinical workflow and beneficially utilized employ a hybrid approach, a cooperation between a healthcare provider and a vendor. Through the scoping review and interviews, we explored the current status of the AI implementation and found many barriers to AI adoption in healthcare. I will go through some of these barriers briefly. There is a lack of trust in AI and also lack of knowledge about AI. Explainability and interpretability of AI solutions are complicated. Also, there is a little involvement of healthcare professionals in implementation process. There is a no defined implementation process. Also, validation process of algorithms are long and challenging. There is a fragmentation in the organizations when it comes to the decision making and funding. The regulations are complex and have different interpretations. Some of them are out of date. Obtaining C mark is expensive and time consuming. Resources can be divided to human and financial resources. Some of the barriers in this field are the lack of health and IT personnel, the lack of funding dedicated to implementation, and lack of arena to learn about AI. Data is one of the main challenges, not only in AI. Data is fragmented and has poor quality. The ethical committee approval for data collection is long and time consuming process. Also, there is a lack of privacy preserving routines for transferring and storage the data. There are some barriers regarding the infrastructure, such as the lack of ICT infrastructure for AI utilization within enough computing power to analyze the health data and outdated infrastructure is also unable to handle today's load of the data. We summarize the outcomes and define the framework for AI implementation, facilitating for broad AI adoption. This framework is composed of three steps, planning, development or procurement, and deployment. Each step has its own components. The planning components are prerequisites for further steps, and you will see the green ones are the planning components. Then after the planning step, a uh, healthcare organization can develop or uh, purchase an AI system that this is the blue chain in the middle. The third step is deployment. Under the deployment of the system, its validation and maintenance should be strongly considered. As you see, it's like a watch mechanism with many gears working together where each gear is important and should fit to the others for the whole mechanism to work. However, with these challenges, broad adoption of AI implementation requires several actions to be taken on the national and local levels. We have some recommendations for AI adoptions uh, to authorities and healthcare organizations. For each category of that barriers I have already mentioned, we have some recommendations, which uh, here we have summarized them, and we can have more details through our report. 
we can increase the knowledge about AI by including AI in curriculum of medical students, offer AI foundations for all the healthcare employees, promote knowledge about AI among citizens through different activities. We can have multidisciplinary team from data scientists, technicians, and clinical domain experts. We can organize an iterative development process, involve healthcare professionals, having a strategic support from the management of healthcare organization, exploit innovation offices to support for planning, regulation, licensing, and commercialization, we can publish a guideline on implementation process, and we can promote cross-disciplinary cooperation through competence networks and digital innovation hubs. Actions for regulation component are time consuming. It's required proper interpretation, who is responsible and how to start. We should develop a unified and concise legislation for secondary use of health data, which will be aligned uh, with the future regulation for the European health data space. In the regulations, there should be a balance uh, between uh, importance of privacy preserving and equality of provided healthcare. Guidance and support on regulations within AI can be provided for cooperative groups across academia, private, and public sectors. In addition to what uh, has been recommended in the organization and cooperation part for human resources, we recommend to create cross-disciplinary support teams for implementation and procurement processes, facilitate incorporation of data scientists with AI competence in healthcare organizations, and allocate time for the AI competence uh, rise among the healthcare professionals. For financial resources, we can advise to establish a strategic national investment in implementation of AI in healthcare. Also create financial incentives for healthcare organizations to develop and use of AI solutions. Create financial investment incentives to encourage cooperation between industry, academia, and healthcare. We can involve the healthcare professionals from the start of implementation process and include patient representatives. Our recommendations for improvement of data availability include, among others, to open, develop open anonymized data sets, establish the national research data management and governance hub, and establish the National Data Reuse Center, uh, which in the future will play the role of a coordinator for the European health data space. We should engage with private sector, regional ICT providers, and innovation funds about the financial resources for building ICT infrastructure, upgrade local ICT infrastructure, or establish ICT infrastructure in collaboration with universities. The second step in the framework is development or procurement. Our suggestions for this step are study and map the clinical workflow, establish documentation and quality assurance from the start, incorporate feedback from the healthcare professionals, incorporate medical guidelines, and standardize and emphasize use of standardized data APIs, and develop guidelines for procurement and evaluation of AI systems. The last step is deployment step, which includes validation and maintenance. There is an immediate need for more knowledge and guidelines regarding the validation process of AI solutions. It's important to develop and publish guidelines for validation of AI systems from the perspective of healthcare professionals. 
We also suggest to establish a national validation platform with a national validation data set for algorithms to be cross-validated uh, to improve generalizability of the AI solutions. There is also a need for competence and guidance on how to assess whether an AI system is safe for implementation in healthcare organization. This step is very important before the deployment of the system as in the case of <sighs> failure or incor incorrect perform validation, use of such systems will expose patients to medical errors such as injuries or even uh, death as well as privacy breaches. Maintenance of the AI solution also implies continuous performance monitoring of the system in clinical use to be ready to stop its usage in case of a risk to patients because of low performance together with the action plan in the case of failures and addressing performance drift, data storage, system updates, and user, uh, user support. There are some of the recommendations we provided for healthcare authorities to facilitate the AI implementation process. For more details, you can read our report and we hope this comprehensive study on the AI implementation process will be valuable resource for future evidence-informed policy and decision-making. Thank you.